All right, so today we are testing the RTX 4070 Ti in Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. This is the expansion. I'm in Dogtown at the moment. If you have a look at the map here, this is the petroleum petrochem station in Dogtown. This is a very demanding area, very difficult area to run for most of the GPUs anyway. Today we're pairing this GPU with a 14600K F CPU from Intel, and that again is paired with DDR5 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 memory. I'll put up all the specs on the screen right now but uh, let's get right to it i'm at 1080p ultra at the moment let's just uh, start our benchmark run 1080p ultra just without any upscaling i manually disable any uh, dlss or fsr and that gets manually applied by using a preset but uh, i just selected the ultra preset and uh, manually disabled that right so no uh, ray tracing no uh, frame generation no nothing and as you can see, we're getting around 127 frames per second on average, which is pretty good. Our uh, GPU usage is staying quite high, which means we are not really CPU limited. And uh, that makes sense. The 14600K is actually a pretty fast uh, CPU paired with uh, 6400 megatransfers per second memory. It uh, makes for a good pairing. Sure, you can get faster memory. Right, so our average here was 127 frames per second. Our 1% uh, loads are sitting at 90 and our 0.1% loads were actually 78 until the auto save occurred sorry if there's going to be a few cuts in this video there's a, a, a big thunderstorm happening so just a, cutting out the the noise there anyway so let's uh, let's just see what we can actually do here with uh, enabling frame generation not that you need it you get 125 frames per second here so uh, it's just for for interest sake right we're not recommending any of these settings i'm just uh, showing you what kind of uh, what performance these uh, settings all have all right so we're at the exact same settings the 1080p ultra preset uh, no upscaling just with the frame generation enabled now and uh, these people are rude if you remember we were getting around 125 127 frames per second on average that has crept up to 190 frames per second so around 60 percent uh, increase in the frame rate there you can't say performance increase because it's not uh, performance it's literally uh, frame insertion frame interpolation frame generation that's exactly where the name comes from now it does increase input latency but if we start off with the high frame rate like we did at 120 five frames per second and you enable frame generation like the the additional input latency is like not really noticeable right not that you'd be playing this game at these settings with this gpu um once again i'm just showing all the settings all right for those of you interested if you've got a 240 hertz of 1440p or 1080p panel then uh there you go you can almost uh, max that out all right, I think that's going to be it for 1080p. If we test on the high preset, we are actually CPU bound. So it does not really uh, show the performance of the GPU. The And if you enable upscaling in 1080p, it just looks uh, not good at all. And you then also run the risk of becoming a CPU bound if you use uh, upscaling at 1080p. So it's not really worth it to, to test anything at 1080p as i said the ray tracing results will be in a separate video of the ray tracing benchmark. So let's move on to 1440p. Right, so just to show you, we're at 1440p on the ultra preset, and I just disable resolution scanning. I do it a few times because sometimes it does not apply. So that's pretty much it. No frame generation, no ray tracing, no path tracing, and uh, just 1440p on the ultra preset. All right, and now you can see we're getting around 50% uh, less of a frame rate than what we had at 1080p, uh, getting around 80 frames per second here, where previously we had 120 frames per second. And that makes sense obviously and uh, this is actually a pretty good experience i'm not going to lie 1440p on the ultra preset getting above 60 frames per second at all times definitely a a very playable experience for those of you aiming for 60 frames per second and uh, if you do lock this to to 60 i mean you can see our 0.1 percent loads are actually sitting at 60 too so i mean you'll you'll be guaranteed 60 frames per second pretty much all of the time and as i said this is a very demanding area if you are outside of this specific area you will actually get a higher frame rate so definitely not terrible i'm not I don't think you should be playing on the ultra preset if we move this down to the high preset you'll see we we gain quite a bit of performance but uh, obviously we're just here to test all the settings right so let's just uh, use a dlss uh, quality here and then we'll use frame generation etc and then we'll go on to another preset right so all i've done is i've just enabled dlss super resolution on quality none of the settings have changed and uh, let's just reset our numbers there so we went from 
just uh, between 80, 80 and 85 frames per second, the specific area to just above 90 frames per second and uh, seeing 120 frames per second there. So DLSS definitely does help with getting a, a pretty nice performance bump here and uh, we're encroaching on that high refresh rate experience and uh, that's an auto save. I'm not sure how to disable auto saves. I think I'd, I tried it once. There is a there used to be a setting to disable auto saves or to adjust the frequency and uh, I kind of forgot about that so unfortunately my benchmark runs are riddled with auto saves and I'll just reset the numbers as those happen. But now you can see our 0.1% lows are actually pretty respectable as well it's still like way above 60 frames per second and uh, our average is sitting at 103 frames per second so a very very decent uh, showing here actually now i'm going to enable frame generation on top of a dlss quality and let's see what that does all right so i just enabled frame generation and uh, that immediately boosted our frame rates by around uh, 40 to 50 percent depending on which area we are in uh, at the start there we were getting around 100 frames per second and with frame generation got around 140 frames per second so a very very decent uh, increase increase in the frame rate there and if you do enable frame generation at such a high frame rate as I said earlier like you don't really notice the the input latency or it, it becomes negligible right it's not it's not that distracting as if you were getting 60 frames per second and then you enable frame generation so that's why I typically always enable DLSS uh, quality or balance to just to boost uh, or bump up the the base frame rate before I enable frame generation and uh, then you do get a very decent experience I know people will ask me but what about uh, frame generation and native we'll test it but the input latency unfortunately will be slightly higher all right so let's do that right now all right so here we are and uh, this is without any upscaling just with a frame generation enabled and the input latency like our base frame rate or our frame rate didn't drop that much but the the input latency does feel kind of floaty if that's the the correct word like it's it's not terrible but you do notice it and uh, i was actually expecting dlss to make a bit of a bigger difference here especially considering we, we saw a nice boost in performance uh, at, uh, without frame generation by just enabling the LSS quality but uh, frame generation seems to do okay here with uh, the native resolution without any upscaling but I would still I would still highly recommend you enable DLSS when you want to enable frame generation. Obviously not necessarily recommended at 1080p because upscaling at 1080p does have its drawbacks but as soon as you go to 1440p and 4k don't just enable frame generation at native resolution just use uh, some upscaling it looks plenty good at 1440p and 4k still so it's uh, definitely worth it in my opinion. I know there's a lot of discourse around frame generation but I like it I use it in many games as many games as possible if I can get an, a high enough base frame rate if you don't like it luckily it's an option that you can just disable all right so let's move on to the 1440p high preset right we're now at 1440p on the high preset and if you remember we got around just above 70 frames per second on the ultra preset and now we're getting around 90 frames per second so this is pretty similar to enabling dlss quality on ultra uh, the frame rate because uh, uh, we gained around 20 frames per second by enabling DLSS quality and now we gained 20 to 30 frames per second by enabling uh, just the high preset and I do think that uh, optimized settings is definitely worth it uh, if, especially if you don't have a 1490 even if you do have a 4090 you, you can definitely squeeze a high frame rate out of uh, that uh, GPU as well if you just use uh, optimized settings or not just uh, switch everything to ultra and uh, let it go I mean high looks plenty good enough if you're going to pixel peep you'll notice a difference between high and ultra but uh, playing the game probably not that big a difference all right uh, so we had an average of 98 frames per second our 1% lows are sitting at 77 and our 0.1% lows are sitting at 70 before the autosave all right let me just see if i can actually disable the autosave all right unfortunately i could not find a way to disable the autosave but i've enabled the lss so we're just at the 1440p high preset and the dlss set to quality here and you can see we gained another 20 to 30 well 30 to 40 frames per second uh, just by enabling the lss quality here. the lss quality still looks plenty good especially at 1440p 
not a not a big difference actually and uh, there's some advantages some of the uh, anti-aliasing does look slightly better using dlss obviously it'll look better if you just use dla as opposed to the native uh, anti-aliasing and uh, also as opposed to using upscaling but the dlss does a pretty good job yeah right this is actually a very a very good experience if you've got a 144 hertz monitor i do game daily on a 165 hertz 1440p panel so i, I pretty much use settings similar to this and then I just enable fr frame generation and uh, to try and max out that 165 hertz panel right but here we are our average was sitting at 140 frames per second uh, 1 percent close at 103 and our 0.1 percent close at a 92 this is actually a very very good experience so let's see what happens if we enable frame generation right so we enabled frame generation and we gained another 30 to 40 frames per second so we basically doubled our frame rate we went from like 90 frames per second to 180 frames per second and uh, each setting gained us like 40 frames per second do a give or take a dlss set to quality gain, gained us 40 frames per second and then frame generation gained us another 40 to 45 frames per second and uh, we are exceeding the the monitor's refresh rate uh, at 165 hertz like we're hitting 200 frames per second yeah that's actually very impressive for a game like cyberpunk i know it's not real performance as i said it's frame interpolation but it's still very impressive the motion fluidity is insane at uh, 165 frames per second if you use vsync to lock it because uh, obviously frame generation does not work with vsync right in game but you can enable vsync in the control panel and uh, it's actually pretty good then but you should not enable vsync with frame generation if you've got a 60 hertz monitor like a you're going to have a very bad time anyway so our average here is 182 our one percent lows are sitting at 160 and our 0.1 percent lows at 135 this is this was a very very good experience if you've got a 240 hertz panel this is uh this is almost maxing that out and uh, for cyberpunk that's uh, that's impressive as it is one of the the more demanding games are still out there all right so i think that's it for our 1440p results let's move on to 4k all right we're back and we're at 4k at the moment on the ultra preset just without any upscaling and um not the not the best experience <laughs> getting around uh, 40 frames per second now for those of you aiming for 30 frames per second uh, no no shame in that at all uh, this is uh, this is what you'll be aiming for right there was an auto save so i'm just resetting the numbers so i mean this is this is the the best looking you'll see this game right 4k ultra without ray tracing obviously so and uh, getting just above 30 frames per second like it's not ideal but it is it's very good looking and if uh, as i said if you if you want to play at 30 frames per second maybe just increase the the motion blur and uh, you'll hide a lot of uh, like the choppiness when it comes to motion at a low frame rate all right so this is not exactly what i'd call optimal i do prefer 60 frames per second plus so let's see what we need to do to get 60 frames per second at 4k ultra all right so as you can see we at 61 frames per second and this is with dialysis balance so we're on the 4k ultra preset dialysis balanced and we're getting 60 frames per second now that is that's quite impressive um, i'm not going to lie sure we are using a balanced upscaling but 4k you can you can go down to performance even and it'll still look good i'm not a big fan of using ultra performance at 4k but performance is still definitely good enough and uh, dlss balanced just looks extremely good on a 4k monitor yeah. now it will drop below 60 frames per second at times this won't be a locked 60 frames per second but if we just drop this down to to the high preset or even the medium preset we'll we'll get a pretty decent frame rate all right so there we have it uh, average of 62 frames per second one percent lows of 54 and uh, our 0 0.1 percent lows are sitting at 51 that's actually pretty respectable how close those numbers are to each other it just means that the the experience was quite smooth with like no stuttering at all right so now we're getting 60 frames per second and it's not worth it to enable frame generation at this frame rate like the input latency will just be pretty bad and at 4k we'll gain mostly like 
15 frames per second, right? So nothing, nothing to gain at all by enabling frame generation at 60 frames per second if you're getting, uh, if you're running at 4K, right? And at least on these uh, 4070, 4070 Ti GPUs at 4090, probably at 4K you'll gain a little bit more by enabling frame generation. It's just that uh, on these, I'm going to call them mid-range GPUs because uh, that's where they fall in the stack. They're definitely not priced as mid-range GPUs, but <laughs> unfortunately it is what it is. All right, so let's uh, let's just drop this down to, to 4K medium. Just use some respectable settings for 4K or realistic settings, I should say. All right, so we're now on the medium preset at native resolution. So no upscaling and we are getting pretty much the same frame rate as what we had with the DLSS set balanced at 4K Ultra, right? So this is what I mean. Uh, realistic settings at 4k so now if we do enable dlss as i said we can we can go even up to performance I, I don't think we will in this video we'll probably go up to balanced again and then we'll test some frame generation but uh, this is actually a very very decent experience uh, if you if you just want 60 frames per second just enable dlss quality because uh, that will that will probably maintain 60 frames per second all of the time or like 99 percent of the time i should say and uh, but this this was definitely not terrible especially considering uh, i'm recording this on a 4k 60 hertz monitor i wouldn't mind if uh, if i had uh, two or three frames per second below 60. all right so let's see what happens if we enable dlss balanced yeah right the, i did not expect that so 109 frames per second at 4K with DLSS balance on the medium preset. Definitely <laughs> impressive. If, you, if you've got a 4K 120 hertz panel, then this is definitely where you should be playing this game if you want to max out of your panel. Sure, I know a lot of people say you don't need more than 60 frames per second in a single player game. There's a lot of things we don't need, and there was an auto save. There's a lot of things we don't need, but we still want and have. And there was actually not an auto save there, and that was a pretty big stutter not entirely sure what uh, what's causing that yesterday i actually recorded this whole video and uh, there was a lot a lot of stuttering when using dlss ray reconstruction hopefully in my next video when i record that's resolved i didn't change anything but uh, <laughs> from my testing so far it seems to be resolved but murphy's law the moment i start recording there will be some stuttering like that like we had two pretty big stutters not entirely sure what that is about but uh, i mean we've got a pretty decent average of 110 frames per second and our one percent lows are sitting at 82 just our 0 0.1 percent lows are, are very low due to those stutters but this is actually a very good experience for 4k right 4k upscaled all right so let's uh, let's enable frame generation let's see if we can actually get to close to 144 frames per second i doubt it so we gained around 15 frames per second right so and, uh, and that's what I mean by enabling frame generation at 4K. Like the GPU is just running out of uh, horsepower to, uh, out of resources to actually be able to, to properly insert frames or do frame generation at, uh, if it's uh, so heavily utilized. That's, that's my uh, feeling. I don't think we're running out of VRAM here because uh, VRAM is sitting at 8.2 gigabytes. Uh, frame generation does use slightly more VRAM and I've seen on 8 gigabyte GPUs like the 4060 sometimes it helps it doesn't help at all because we're running out of VRAM but over here we still got plenty of VRAM to spare and uh, frame generation is not really doing much but uh, as I said it's just because 4k is so intensive anyway and I think the GPU just falls a little bit short all right so that's it for our raster tests as I said the ray tracing tests will follow soon after this video hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one.